All right, so this morning I'm going to take a look at the Bricks Builder experimental query filters, uh, which I've only just looked at. I tend to avoid these experimental features until they become production because there's just so many things to figure out, so many things to learn. Um, you can get really bogged down in testing things that aren't even ready yet. So I generally avoid them. However, recently I was looking for a solution where I could do some simple facet filtering. I didn't want to have to use facet WP or uh, WP Grid Builder. Um, so I started looking at options for that. And one of the options I came up with was using a REST endpoint, using Alpine JS, and just uh, rendering uh, on the front end with JavaScript, uh, which worked fine. Um, it, it was a reasonable solution. And then I kind of remembered that, hey, hold on, isn't Bricks playing around with uh, filtering for core? Uh, so I thought I'd have a look at what they've done with this, and hopefully this is going to be a production feature soon. Now, simply, I've got to say that Thomas and team continue to amaze me. They are just... I don't know. They just—they're just something special. They uh, every time they do something, um, it is better than what I would expect it to be. And um, the, you know, there's a few developers out there like that, but um, these guys, uh, every implementation is just so so incredibly good and simple um, that you know I'm, I'm just so glad to be a Bricks user. I just really think that it is a incredible dev, dev team, and what they do just works and works well. Uh, that's not to say Bricks is perfect. There are some issues, you know, builder lag, things like that. Sometimes you don't get screen updates in your builder and you have to refresh. Um, but look, the things that they're working on, the things that could be better, um, they, you know, are you forgiving of those because everything else is so amazing. And uh, anyway, that is enough of that waffle. So the query filters in Bricks. So to use them, you have to switch that on in your general settings. Uh, so go to your general settings and make sure you flick the switch here to enable your sort and filter. It does say here it's only for post at the stage while it's experimental, so you can't use it on CPTs or any other entities. Uh, once it becomes usable on the CPTs and other entities, I think this is going to be an absolute game changer for um, Bricks Builder as a page builder. Uh, everything else like the, the dynamic data, in particular, the query loops, all that sort of stuff. Everything about it is just brilliant already, but this is going to take it to the next level. And I, I really believe that. And I'm going to show you why. So first of all, what I'm going to look at is how other facet filtering works. And this isn't a criticism of, of how they work because other facet filtering is built to work across uh, general WordPress sites, regardless of whether you're using, you know, Gutenberg, or Gutenberg, sorry, uh, or you know, or whether you're using Oxygen or Breakdance or, you know, Elementor or whatever you're using, um, it's it's got to work across all of those. Whereas what Bricks are doing here is specifically to work with Bricks Builder. So uh, they are different, and I'm going to show you the big difference. Here's a basic uh, WooCommerce. Well, it's not so basic. We we actually with this client, they wanted to uh, not sell products, they just wanted a quote cart. So this has been modified for a quote cart. But this is an example where it uses um, WP Grid Builder. And if we have a look at the uh, network tab, we're we on the network tab, we are. And if I change a category here, I'm going to just have a look at that there. There it is there. So what that's doing is it's actually, when I change the category, it's calling the site root URL with a query of, um, uh, sorry, a, a URL query of uh, WPGB-AJAX equals refresh and a bunch of other properties. So what I'm seeing there is actually calls the root URL with a query. It's not calling an AJAX endpoint. It's not using uh, WP's uh, new REST endpoints. It's calling the root page with that query. So what that's telling me is it's probably, and, and, and it is the case because I figured it out by looking at it, the way these work is they render the entire page. So whatever you have on that page, it renders the entire page in the back end with the updated uh, query and then pulls the ID 
of the section that you want the facet for, pulls that out, gets the HTML, and returns that as your HTML. So it think about that in terms of performance. It has to render the entire page, then look for the piece that you want, pull it out of that, and then return that. And that's how these facet filters work um, with uh, Bricks Builder. Okay. So, and I'd say it's be the same with they're working with Elementor, whether they're working with um, Breakdance, whatever it is, they would be doing the same thing. So I thought about it and I thought, okay, am I going to bother doing that? I looked at it. Um, I thought, actually, look, it's actually going to be easier if I just register a REST endpoint and I use something like Alpine.js uh, and, um, you know, pull the data as JSON and then just render that on the live page. I ended up doing that. Uh, and it worked fine, um, but it is different in the sense that we're not doing any back-end rendering uh, of this. We're rendering it using JavaScript on the front end, which means that in the builder, it's actually, you can't, you can't see it. You can't see what you're working on in the builder um, because it's all done via um, XHR calls when the page is already um, you know, rendered. So yeah, you can't do anything with it in the builder, uh, which makes it a little bit more difficult to work with. So I started looking at the experimental feature here and I'll show you the big, big difference. And this is gonna make a massive difference to performance. Now, if so first of all, you gotta enable your query filters in the uh, general brick settings. If we look at the builder, I've got here a basic, um, loop query loop here and all i've got on that is the default so i haven't said anything it's just calling default which is using some faker press lorem ipsum uh, posts it's just pulling those in and i've just got those laid out into like basic cards with an image heading and an excerpt and that is my structure okay um, so that's just going to put uh, i think what is the default here uh what is the default yeah put a uh, maximum of 10 of these on the page at one time okay All right so that's the basic basic query now what the filter search does actually i'll just show you in the elements if i start typing filter once you've enabled that experiment these are the filters that you get so checkbox day picker etc i've just used the search uh, and if we just go to the search filter all we do is target query which is really cool because that syncs that name with whatever you've named the element here in the structure panel. Um, what do we apply it on? So input is basically when something changes in the input. So when you've done a key up, so you type something, key up, um, or do you want to wait till the submit? So you actually have a submit, and then you've got a submit button to submit it or press the enter key or whatever it is. Okay, so we're going to do it on input. And the default is a debounce of 500 milliseconds, so it doesn't do a query on every key press. You know, you can type a word, type a sentence if you're nice and quick, um, and it's not going to do multiple queries to the back end until you, until you finish typing for at least uh, half a second. And you can vary that as well there. Um, and the minimum of characters before it starts searching, so if you type two letters, it's not going to search. Type three letters, it's going to search. And then basically the placeholder, It'd be really, really cool here if they also had an option to what are you searching? Uh, in this example over here, they've got three and a half thousand items in their cart, in their, sorry, in their um, products. So what they were finding is that when people typed in, say, for example, here, if they typed in, sir, uh, typed in here shirt, and what it was doing is it was returning all these erroneous um, items in here because um, it was searching the content and maybe it wasn't actually a shirt, but there was some word in there that had the word shirt or cap or something like that. And it was looking at all of the content. They only wanted it to search on the titles. So we had to create a custom uh, WordPress um, uh, filter to uh, edit the query and only search for the uh, titles. Okay, so we had to do that manually, but it'd be nice if it was a option here what are you going to search on? Is it just the titles? Is it the whole post? Is it just the um, content? Or is it the title and the content? So maybe it's checkboxes or something like that, or switches to say, what are you searching? Um, that would be nice to have in there anyway. That's a side note. The way this works is basically we just link that filter to that query. Here's what's different because it's core. Here's what's different between 
say using uh, FastWP or um, or the core uh, bricks features. If I rename that element there that's got the query on it, I'll just call that cards. All right. So rename that to cards. Have a look at my filter search. It's named that to cards. So it knows which elements have got queries on them, and it just gives you a drop down to what are you going to actually apply this filter to. Uh, with things like uh, WP Grid Builder, you've got to get the ID, or you've got to create an ID on there, and then you've got to get that ID and you've got to put it into here. Uh, and you know, you make sure it makes sense, otherwise you're going, well, what is you know BRXE, you know, YWT, whatever. So you give it a you have to give that a name as a ID, put it on your search filter or whatever um, facet filter you're using, uh, so that it makes sense. I like the fact that with the core uh, filtering, facet filtering, it links it up with whatever you've put on the structure panel here. Just makes it really, really easy to see where those are. That's a really nice feature. All right, now have a look at the front end here. I'm just going to refresh that. And we're going to see that is all of our queries. So we've got 10 returned for that as default. If I type in cats, I get one query. Because I typed it quickly enough, if I type in C, it doesn't do anything. A, it doesn't do anything. T, that's my third letter. So it queries. Uh, if I put cats are uh, cool, it does one query because there's enough. Sorry, there wasn't half a second between the typing. And cats are cool. No space there. Obviously, it doesn't bring anything because there's no cats cool. So I'm going to put birds in there again. Okay, and that birds query went off and got the birds. Uh, and the way it did that was just to render that block. So basically, from here down is the only thing the back end rendered, not the entire page. So not the header, footer. All the content you got on the page, all it rendered was that one block and its children and returned that. So that is the difference. Now, I can't wait for this to be released as a production feature and extended to CPTs because here's the difference with this one here, this uh, live site here. What I find with that is that I have, uh, I run my own uh, server, uh, hosting server. And I generally allow 400% CPU, so four CPUs, um, and I'm using Vulture high frequency, so four, three gig CPUs is the maximum this could get to. And with one user, if I'm continually changing things here, uh, you know, and I look at my back end, I'm probably going to be up around, you know, uh, maybe around 120, 130% CPU usage, right? And my concern is that if this really grows and I get you know, 100 concurrent users using it, um, I'm going to need a lot more CPU in my back end, right? So I'm going to need to either put that out onto its own VPS or allocate more CPUs on my shared server for this to happen, right? So if we can cut down on the amount of CPU rendering in the back end, it makes sense, absolutely makes sense. And the Bricks way of doing it where they're just rendering the uh, the block from there down and returning that, it must have a performance uh, benefit over rendering the whole page and then pulling out the content and returning that. So having this as a core feature, I think is brilliant. I can't wait for it to be uh, a production feature with CPTs and other entities. Uh, really, really, really looking forward to that. And hopefully it's in the next release. Anyway, that's my first look at this. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too much of a waffle for you guys, but I'm excited about it. Uh, if you can't tell, um, but uh, anyway, I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts and, uh, you know, whether you think there's, I'm right or wrong, whatever. Okay, thanks guys.